Well, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Danish Bhatti. Uh, I'm a movement disorders neurologist, and I teach physicians online within developing countries in the most underserved areas. Uh, and I teach them in their working environment, in their working location, using their own cases, and then using active learning techniques, uh, using various formats. And then I will try to summarize uh, in this presentation briefly. Um, let me start with kind of a context or case study. So I'm from Pakistan and uh, I've been in Nebraska since 2009. Pakistan is the fifth largest uh, by population country in the world, has 212 uh, million uh, uh, population and um, about 200 or so trained neurologists, a little over 200. So that's about one per million population uh, neurologist, one neurologist per million. And if you compare that with something like Nebraska, where we have 2 million population, that will be two neurologists for the whole state of Nebraska to, to give you a context. And if you take the larger portion of Middle East around it, the situation is not any better. Uh, and um, just in the United States alone, there are more than 400 neurologists from Pakistan. And I actually know more than 200 of them. So, you know, one of the questions that um, I uh, started asking myself uh, when I started going there in 2014 was, why can't we train more neurologists from Pakistan? You know, what's, what's the bottleneck here? And what are the issues? So I met the president of Pakistan Society of Neurology um, uh, late 2014, and I asked him, well, how can we improve the neurology practice in Pakistan? And so his reply to me was that, why don't you take one of our young neurologists to train with you? And... And my reply was, if I take one per year, even if I take one per year, that will take me 10 years to train 10 neurologists or experts. Um, I did bring one with me later on and train him for two years and send him back as a movement disorder neurologist, but that took me five years just to do one. So even that one per year uh, idea doesn't work. So in 2015, I started going back. I started giving lectures. I would go there every three, four months. Um, I will gather these large audiences, talked about movement disorder neurology, including primary care physician, but it was not working. I wasn't sure what impact I'm making or, or what change is actually happening. So I upped the game. I said, okay, let me do workshops. You know, these lectures are not going to work. Uh, let me have them do some hands-on practice, teach them some skill that they don't have, teach them how to use botulinum toxin injections, Botox injections for treatment, deep brain stimulation, all these scenarios, but it was still not working. And I was still not sure that if we are making any change uh, or a large impact or not. Let me give you a context of why teaching is so hard um, in, in medicine. So this is a traditional method of teaching. Uh, on the left of the screen, you can see a, a text explaining an area of the brain called subthalamic nucleus. And after you review all of this in your lectures, in your textbooks, then in your, you sit for your exam and you get this question like this, you know, select which of the following is true and, and you try to find the answer. And this is how I was trained. And, you know, this is not a very good way of training. It does not translate into clinical context. And you have to imagine yourself, what, what are we talking about? So what we have done so far is that we have upped the teaching. And what we do now is that we have these um, graphics, you know, either 2D or now 3D and visual simulations. And we say, okay, you know, you're putting a deep brain stimulation lead and into the subthalamic nucleus, and this is the areas around it. And then you, you know, ask the questions uh, by showing them picture that what if the lead is placed too laterally, wh what is gonna hit, you know, what abnormality will happen and, and, and things like that. So, you know, this has gotten better, <laughs> but really to be honest, what we are really trying to do is to, is to teach them that when you see a patient in a clinic who has uh, Parkinson's disease or deep brain stimulation surgery done, and they're struggling, they're having side effects, they're having speech problems, then where exactly have you gone wrong? Um, yeah. Is the lead too lateral? Is the lead too medial? Uh, what can you do with the stimulation? How can you fix this problem and fix this issue? And, and that's when you really make a big impact, right? That's what we're really trying to get to, but that's not you know, so far easily teachable especially when you add something like a distance of going to Pakistan or another country or remote area of uh, Texas or Oklahoma, how, how are you going to teach those kind of skills to those people? So uh, this was my initial proposal as a solution. I said, let, let's create a fellowship and, you know, uh, where we will gather these neurologists, we'll teach them Parkinson's disease and make them better. And that didn't happen. I kept trying, kept trying and said, okay, by 2017, I said, okay, let me create a fellowship. I will do it online. 
and i will call it a mini fellowship so that you know it does not kind of compete with your fellowship you have the great fellowship where you will teach in person in the clinic whenever you start that they have still not started in 2021 uh, it's been 6 years but i said let me start a mini fellowship where i will take a group of people and i'll teach them online i tried various different things you know i created first a moodle ta- taught them in 2017 in moodle i enrolled different batches uh various criteria of selection i t- taught them through discussions on whatsapp text messages uh gradually got better even used google classroom for a while and then slowly shifted over to canvas a more polished learning management system learned what techniques work what assignments work how to engage them in discussion feedback found to be very useful you can you know get mentor them coach them give them a, a, a targeted feedback to get to the answers that you want you can discuss clinical cases with them these online pr- platforms like slack uh you can create competition award scores and create a gamification system so and you know if you give them assignments you can really bring out their creativity you can really have them think about the problem think about the challenge they're having and, and come up with a solution integrate the information that's being given to them through various sources and you know they were open to find information in addition to what what is being given to them So so far you know we have done four batches starting from 2017 although it's 2020 we're selecting our fifth batch right now we do it once a year for about 7 8 months or so of the year uh, 110 applications so far uh, from all over the world now 44 uh, people have been selected we we have to take a small cohort because it's mentored program cohort based with coaching and and feedback 39 completed the course now all of these physicians i uh, have their own jobs some of them are actually doing two jobs morning and evening they have their family they have a clinical practice they are in other parts of the world initially they were from pakistan but now they're from all over the world you know india in bangladesh and saudi arabia and middle east and they have been out of medical school for a while you know for for 9 years or so so it's not basically kind of a credentialing kind of a concept it's more of skill based program it, my goal is not to make them you know mbbs or give them a degree so they can practice Uh, they are already practicing my job is to make sure that they practice better or they can achieve those skills that that they are still lacking and in that might make them a better physician and, and fill in those gaps so eight countries 18 cities 26 institutions trained so far fifth batch is under enrollment i currently have 70 applications for the fifth batch uh, to try to select the 12 people a cohort you can see kind of a snapshot of their involvement in one year this is a year of 2019 that i selected just to show some data uh they get a certificate at the end they get 60 cme it's a university certificate it basically says that they've completed this program of you know movement disorders for neurologists from mini fellowship in movement disorders from university of nebraska medical center this was the first certificate in in collaboration with pakistan society of neurology uh, now it's a it's a national uh, program we we have some measures to try to see have they achieved something out of it so there is a pre test post test we have we typically see about 30 31% improvement on post test you know this seems to be constant every year uh, that's kind of the improvement i see but in in we do self reflection survey where they rate themselves on on where their knowledge was at the beginning of the course and where they have gotten to on a scale of 1 to 5 at the end of the course but really the post test improvement is not a good metric for uh, for measuring their success you know this is not a pass or fail you cannot ask them 20 question or 50 question and say okay they got it they will perform really well with the next patient that they see with the next parkinson's patient they will see so then how do you grade them how do you take these people from seven different countries and have them do these assignments and then say okay you know this guy is can graduate this guy cannot graduate and you know so the only metric that makes sense to me was a metric of effort so what we try to do is give them grades based on their effort and you can say that if you have done enough effort then you can pass and what is that enough effort so what i do is that i do cohort comparison you say uh, what i i uh, tell them that if you make enough effort in all the assignments throughout the course that your scores of all the assignment put together is within one standard deviation of the group's average uh not below it then then that's it that's enough for me that you put your energy in i don't know how you're going to behave with the next patient you see and would you make you know i make mistakes with patients so maybe you'll make mistake or maybe you'll do it right but as long as you were willing to put effort in that's enough for me to say okay you know i'm satisfied that you have learned what could be taught uh, and there are things that cannot be taught it seems to be working really well so far with all the um, improvement and enhancement that we've done over the years this is the last survey i did you know we were rated five star likelihood of being recommended coming back to do this course uh, grading different techniques that we use uh, for teaching them and then you know various other components of the course was rated 
So this was up until 2020 and then 2020 happened. And it seemed like that I was primed and, and ready to just launch on 2020 and take advantage of all these opportunities of online learning. So last year I published nine courses uh, in addition to the course I do uh, for mini fellowship in movement disorder. And we have six in queue that are going to be published uh, within the next three months. And then most comprehensively, I launched a one year long learning program for primary care physician family medicine in Pakistan. So in Pakistan, there are 140,000 physicians. This is data from 2014 and 110,000 of them are general physicians. And most of them, more than 90% of them have done no residency training. So they graduate from medical school and there is such a need for physician, they can go on and start practicing. They don't have to go for any residency training to have a, a license to practice independently. Then how do you take these physicians who are practicing in really, really poor environments, very, very difficult and challenging environment and seeing thousands of patients a day. I just got an application uh, for the movement disorder mini fellowship and I was looking at it and there were, the applicant said that they see 150 patients a day, 150 patients a day. And, and I don't, you know, I don't think they're lying. I would believe them. Uh, that's, that's kind of the throughput that of patients you have in some of these developing countries. So we started this uh, family medicine specialty program. We thought we'll get people from Pakistan, but we got people from everywhere. 67% of them have had some training before, could be up to a year of training. 32% had no training whatsoever from medical school up on, you know, they may be 20 years out of medical school, but there were physicians from USA who enrolled for this course. This was an open course, UK, Bangladesh, India. There were physicians who were not currently practice, practicing, such as female physicians who, for family reason, left the work. There were people who were working in telehealth last year who enrolled for this course to kind of brush up their knowledge on specialty rotations. Another interesting thing I did last year was to launch a course of an online observership or a virtual observership. So we, we just had this wonderful talk about rotations and observations before. A lot of foreign medical graduates who come here wanting to see how our medical system work, uh, take on these rotations for a month, which is called observership, where you basically walk around and observe what other physicians and residents are doing. So, you know, this was a, a phase one experiment. Now it's being actually redone based on what we learned. 79 students were enrolled in the phase one six months. Uh, this is the feedback from them. Uh, 42 people have responded out of 79. Good rating so far, but I got a lot of good rating on how to improve it. So we went back and we are redoing this course and, and improving it to give them the skills they need for or, or kind of the experience they need. And then, you know, I just did this workshop with our fellows on botulinum toxin injections. And it turned out that, you know, now there are these virtual reality uh, simulations where you can teach them. And if you connect them with the internet, you don't even have to be in the same room. So this is a virtual clinic room where I am in right now. Somebody can walk into this room from, from India, from Pakistan, any part of the world, and we can be there together and I can show them how to do injections. So I don't even have to be there anymore. And that how fast the technology is, is uh, changing. But really, uh, to be honest, um, the whole way of teaching is changing uh, remarkably. As I was preparing this presentation, I ran into this uh, quote or post from Elon Musk. And I agree with him that uh, YouTube has become the new university for everyone, right? Uh, how we learn is changing. Uh, how my daughter, who's 13 years old, learn is changing from YouTube. She was off for a spring break for a week. She said, what can I learn? I gave her five big ideas to review and I gave, them, gave her certain of the video links uh, on YouTube. So, okay, you know, you can start there and then just go on internet and, and, and learn about these five big ideas for future. And I learn from YouTube. So one of the projects that we started just almost, you know, like a fun project was launching a YouTube channel. Um, you know, I've never promoted it haven't done any formal work with this YouTube channel, but I have more than 3,000 followers, about 100 videos. The very first video that we did, this is Dr. Bertoni and this is me. We met for a coffee on a Sunday and we had a camera. So, okay, let's just record a five minute neuro exam and maybe resident, I mean, students can learn what a neuro exam can look like. And, and we just perform a neuro exam. There's no instructions, no nothing, no guidance. And so it's just Dr. Bertoni performing a neuro exam on me. And right now we have about 2.3 million views. So 2.3 million students have already watched this five minute neuro exam and have seen how a neuro exam is being done by two neurologists, you know, on each other. So can YouTube, can you YouTube teach you medicine? And to be honest, it's, it's, it may sound like a joke, but it's not a joke. In 2014, going back to my first visit to Pakistan and I started teaching there. So I visited this institute, which is called, um, you know, I think it's called Pakistan 
inter, uh, institute of medical sciences or something like that really really large institute you know they their neurology outpatient probably see 200 300 patients a day uh, in the outpatient clinic so i met this uh, young faculty assistant professor junior faculty and he i was told that he started a botox clinic a botulinum toxin clinic a, a year ago because you know i was interested in teaching the botulinum toxin clinic uh, injections right so i asked him it's like you know where did you learn to inject a botox clinic and his answer was youtube So he literally watched YouTube videos on how to inject Botox. Many of them are actually wrong, uh, so I had to correct a lot of mistakes. But you know, he uh, basically learned that way. And then he asked his patient, "Do you you want me to try on you?" And they said, "Yeah, you know, we need something, anything that will help." And he started injecting, and he's injected 120 patients when I met him uh, in in 13 months or 14 months. And then I started doing those workshops. So there there is a lot of opportunity. I'm just starting to learn this area, and I'm happy to summarize it for you. Uh, I know there are many challenges, but uh, that's what makes it so exciting this is my email reach out to me with any thoughts or comments i'll stop here thank you